Hey, welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here, and this is the seventh video on sequences where we'll be looking at the geometric series. As always, it is geared towards A level maths courses, but is applicable to lots of other maths modules, so hopefully, you'll find this particularly useful. All right, so similar to a uh, arithmetic series, we have to look at what a geometric series would be. So this is a geometric progression above, um, the first value being A, and then uh, successive terms in this progression or in this sequence are getting bigger or are changing by a factor R. So if I was to sum up this sequence, if I wanted to sum up this um, sequence, geometric sequence, I would have to add A, I would have to add AR, I would have to add AR squared, AR cubed, and so on, and so forth, until we get to the final term, AR to the N minus one. What we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna take this equation, I'm gonna call it equation one. I'm gonna take equation one, and I'm actually gonna double it. I'm gonna double equation one. Oh, sorry, not double equation one, what am I saying? I'm going to multiply it by r, should I say. Multiply it by r to get equation two. So I'm going to do r times s of n. So the first term of this now gets multiplied by r. This is going to get multiplied by r. We get ar squared, ar cubed, and so on and so forth. We're going to get a, uh, at some point we'll get ar to the n minus 1, and we will get another term, a r to the n. Uh, you might be wondering where this has come from. If you consider before this term, we have a r to the n minus 2. When I multiply that by r, we get a r to the n minus 1. And then this term here, multiplied by r, gives me a r to the n, just in case you're wondering what's going on there. I'm going to call this guy equation 2. Then what we're going to do is, we're going to do um, equation 2 take away equation 1. So I got R S N subtract S of N. And what's going to happen? Well, these two terms here are going to cancel out these two terms here will cancel out, these two terms here will cancel out, and so on and so forth. This guy here is going to cancel out with this guy. And we're going to be left with a r to the n, and take away that a. So everything disappears with the exception of a r to the n and a. Okay, now the left-hand side of this, this um, uh, equation, I'm going to factorize out that s of n. So take out the s of n, and that, that leaves me with r minus 1. And then over here, I'm going to factor out the a as well, and we're going to get r to the power of n minus 1. And one final step, if I want to sum up that sequence, divide both sides by r minus 1. Let's just move this down a wee bit. I'm going to have a times r to the power of n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. And that is the formula that we use to sum up a geometric, geometric progression. If we want to add up all the terms in a geometric progression, we can use this formula here. Don't need to know it off by heart. It is given in the formula booklet. But that is how we prove it. Now another thing we can do with this is actually multiply the top of this equation and the bottom of this equation by negative 1 and we end up with this a times 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. They are the same thing but this one here is particularly useful for values of r between negative 1 and 
to 1. So if you've got a very, very small value of r, this, um, this formula here is particularly useful. Every other value, you can use this one. It will work for both, doesn't matter, but the red one is particularly useful when dealing with very small values of r. Okay, so let's put it in practice here now. So, we've got a geometric series, 3 plus 6 plus 12 and so on. We're asked to find the 15th term. First thing I'm going to do is work out the nth term of the sequence. So, the nth, the nth term is going to equal a times r to the power of n minus 1. So, I need a... The first term of the sequence is 3, of the series, if you will. The common ratio r, hopefully you can see that the common ratio is going to be 6 divided by 3, which is 2. Or you could do 12 divided by 6, which is 2. And n is going to be 15 here. Okay. So the 15th, 15... term is going to equal 3 times 2 to the power of 15 minus 1 which is 14. I'm going to get out the calculator here. 3 times 2 to the power of 14 gives us a value of 49,152. 49,152. So nothing particularly new there. I need to find the sum of the first 30 terms for part B. So part B, we're asked to find S of 30. And we're going to remind ourselves over here, the green pen, S of N equals a times r to the power of n minus 1 over r minus 1. So this is the formula we're going to use. If if the value m was particularly small, or value r was particularly small, we'd use, we'd use the other formula. But as I said, you can use either. It will always work. s of 30. Okay, a is still 3. r is still 2 n in this case is going to be 30 take away 1 draw a straight line underneath it and r minus 1 which is 2 minus 1 is going to equal 2 minus 1 is going to be 1 so we're going to get 3 times 2 to the power of 30 minus 1 and again this is um, this is a job for the calculator so get the calculator out Okay, I'm going to do 3 times 2 to the power of 30, 2 to the power of 30, uh, minus 1, and that's going to give us a incredibly large number. I'm going to give this to... Oh, let's just write the whole th down, whole thing down. So we get three two two one two two. Three two two one two two. Five four six nine. Five four six nine, which approximately. Let's go three significant figures. It's going to be three, two, two, and we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. So a really, really big one. Let me see. We're into the, I think it's 3.22 billion. Okay, so that's the sum of the first 30 numbers. Now we need to find the least number of terms, so the smallest number of terms, for which the sum exceeds 10 to the power of 6. Okay. 
So, part C. I want to know, at what point when I start adding up all these numbers, will it be greater than 10 to the power of 6? So, that implies that we're going to use the formula a times r to the power of n minus 1 over r minus 1 at some point is going to be bigger than 10 to the power of 6. So we can see that already. We've already passed that threshold. I want to know exactly how many terms we have to choose. So a we already know. A is 3. R we know is 2. N is what we're working out. And then we're just going to fill in the gaps here. Again, R is 2 minus 1. So like so. I want to know when is that bigger than 10 to the power of 6. So we're going to try and solve this inequality for n. Okay, well the denominator um, quite handily is going to become 1. So we get 3 times 2 to the n minus 1 at some point is going to be greater than 10 to the power of 6. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 now. So we get 2 to the power of n minus 1 at some point will be greater than 10. I'm going to confuse it with my, my zeros and my 6s. 10 to the power of 6 divided by 3. Now I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So we get 2 to the power of n will be greater than 10 to the power of 6 over 3 plus 1 and then finally I'm going to use in order to get this exponent down in front we're going to take the log to the base 2 of both sides so log to the base 2 of 2 to the power of n must be greater than log to the base 2 of all of this here 10 to the power of 6 over 3 plus 1. Now, because we're taking log to the base 2 of 2 and we've got a power here, we can use the power rule from logs if you've seen that video. The n is going to come down in front, so I got n times log to the base 2 of 2. But log to the base 2 of 2 is 1. So we get n times 1, which is n. So, brilliant. So n is going to be equal, uh, greater than whatever value we get here. So, out with the calculator. We want log to the base 2 of 10 to the power of 6 over 3 plus the 1. Here we go. Let the calculator do all the work. 18.3. Uh, let's go to one decimal place. 18.3. 18.3, that implies that it's the 19th value, or after 19 values. So after 19 values, we exceed 1 million. After 19 values. So when we add the first 19 values, we're going to exceed the 1 million mark. Okay, so example two, we've got to find the value of the sum from i equals 10 up to 20 of 3 times negative 2 over 3 to the power i. So let's see if we can write out um, what this would look like. It would be 3 times negative 2 over 3 to the power of 10 plus 3 times negative 2 over 3 to the power 11 plus so on and so forth all the way up as far as 3 times negative 2 over 3 to the power 20. I'm going to add up all those terms. All right, so we've got some sort of geometric um, series going on here. Now, let's consider what is the first value a. 
first value a in this series is this value here, 3 times negative 2 over 3 to the 10. So a is going to be 3 times negative 2 over 3 to the power 10. That's the first thing. What about the value r? What's the common ratio each time? Well, if I take this term and divide it by this term, hopefully you can realize quite simply I'm going to get a value of negative 2 over 3. So if I multiply this, this term here by negative 2 over 3, we're going to get this. Multiply it by negative 2 over 3, we're going to get the next one. And you keep going all the way up until you get negative 2 over 3 to the power 20. Okay, and then the last part, and the one that we got to really watch out for, is the value n. What is the value n here? Now, the common mistake is to say, well, 20 take away 10 is 10, so n must be 20. Not so. Get your fingers out, get them ready, let's do some counting. We're going to start at 10 and count up to 20 and see how many numbers we go through. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There is, in fact, 11 terms. There would be 10 if i was equal to 11. So think about it. If I count from 1 to 10, we get, we get 10 values. If I count from 0 to 10, there's actually 11 values. So watch out for that. Be careful. Don't make that mistake. Okay, now we're going to use our wonderful formula, but we're actually going to use the other formula because the value r is between negative 1 and 1. So, let's write down our formula. S of n is going to equal a times, now the other version was 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. Now we're going to substitute. Now we could use the other formula, like I said, it will work, but this is particularly useful here. 3 times negative 2 over 3 to the power 10. Okay, so that's A written in. Times by 1 minus R, we've written here in brackets, is negative 2 over 3. You've got to be careful. Protect the negative... Protect the 2 over 3 with the brackets so that you have the negative sign inside because we're going to put a power here. We're going to put the power of 11. Close off those brackets. We can, we can draw a line under the whole thing or we can draw a line under this. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same. I'm going to do the whole thing like so. And then underneath we've got 1 minus and then R is negative 2 over 3 like so. Okay. A little bit more space, and then we're going to get our calculator out. So, if I've done things correctly, I should just have to type things in as I see it. So we're dealing with a fraction. We get the fraction button. 3 times, open those brackets, negative, it's another little fraction, 2 over 3, close those brackets, to the power of 10, Moving on, open another set of brackets. 1 minus another bracket. Negative a fraction. 2 over 3. Close that bracket to the power of 11. And then close the final bracket. Okay, over. 1 minus, open that bracket, negative, it's a fraction, 2 over 3, close the bracket, and a presto, 0 0.3157, and so on. Let's do it to three significant figures, 0 0.0316. 0 0.0316 and that's it I'm going to leave it at that hopefully you found the video useful we'll be back again with another one soon all the best and good luck with revision